Do you want to rock? If you do, get yourself some metal heads and get your fish on. The metal head is the most advanced trolling fly on the market. It is a fly designed to troll fast. Get a kit today at fishhuntshoot.com and you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. Howdy guys, Cal Kellogg here. It is July 29th. I'm down on the middle fork of the American River. I'm fishing for trout. It's early in the morning and I am fishing with flies. Oh yeah, woo, right there. Nice fish, that's three pounds, easy. Great, on the trolling fly. I got it, I got it, oh my God. Look at that stud, look at that stud of a rainbow. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that dude. Oh. There we go. He's going on a strainer. Look at that fish. That's another nice fish. That's right, guys. I'm fishing with flies and I'm fishing with spinning gear. I'm obviously not trolling. I'm fishing a river. I'm not fishing with a Panther Martin. I'm not fishing with a Rapala. I am throwing some of the same flies that you see me trolling with out of the FHS pontoon boat and out of my kayak. And uh, if you're not throwing flies on spinning gear, if you're a bank angler, if you're a stream angler, you're not catching as many fish as you could be catching because it's a very unique presentation. Okay, I'm carrying two rods today, two kind of standard spinning rods. Here, I'll show you this rod. Um, they're both rigged up pretty much the same way. This is just a, this is just an old Abu Garcia, kind of a, a medium fast action rod rated for, I think, six to 12 pound test line. I've got it spooled up with 20 pound braid. I brought that braid down. I've spliced on some eight pound test fluorocarbon leader. That's what I'm using for the presentation. The other rod is rigged up virtually the same way. It's a different model rod. I think that one's a Fenwick, but uh, it's rigged up the same way. 20 pound braid spliced to fluorocarbon and then that's where my offering is now whenever you're using a fly like this when you're using a fly and you're casting it you've got to add some weight i mean that fly and that action disc right there has very little action okay so you could you could pair it with a water bobber not really going to work for the for the kind of presentation I'm using. I'm fishing this much the same way as I would fish a Rapala. I'm fishing it sometimes, you know, up current, I'm casting it up current. Most of the time I'm either casting it across current or down current. I'm working it across the current and I'm fishing it on a tight line. I'm adding some twitches and of course I'm using the reel at times, but mostly I'm fishing it on a tight line and I'm allowing water pressure against that wiggle disc to give this you know, vibration and then you're getting flash from the tinsel. Um, it's, it's very alive when it's in the water. It looks like a sculpin. It looks like a small trout. It looks like any number of small bait fish. So basically, this is my Rapala replacement. I'm fishing in a campground here. Any trout that's in the water behind me has saw 28,000 Rapalas, but I don't think they've ever seen a fly teamed with a wiggle disc. So it's, it's, it's out of the box. You know me, I don't like to play follow the leader. If everybody else is throwing Rapalas and Castmasters, well, I'm gonna throw something different. I'm gonna throw something that I don't think anybody else or very few guys are throwing. I'm, and in this case, I'm gonna throw a three, three and a half inch fly bait fish imitating fly teamed with a wiggle disc discs now there's a few different ways that I could weight this rig for that kind of fishing um, in years past I would have used a swivel and a bullet weight and set up some kind of an improvised Carolina rig to give me the weight the bullet weight would give me the weight and then I'd run a leader with the fly on it that works great you could also put split shot on the line that tends to snag a lot more than the bullet weight. But uh, what I'm using these days, and I absolutely love these things, are these uh, trolling weights. I get these off of Amazon. They've got, it's a weight and it's got the swivel on either end. I've showed you guys these on the channel before. Um, I don't know how much that weighs. They're, they're measured in grams, but I'm, I'm guessing that's gonna weigh somewhere between a quarter and a half an ounce. Um, it's really nice because it's easy to put in your line, improve clinch not there, improve clinch not there, down to the fly, improve clinch not on the fly, 
and I'm probably running that fly, I don't know, 24, 30 inches away from that weight. That gives me plenty of casting weight. I can cast all the way across the stream with this rig. It also gives me some weight to get the fly down. I'll count it down a bit, or I'll, you know, I'll kind of quarter it upstream just a hair, give that weight a little bit of time to drag that flight down towards the bottom, then I'll let the line tighten up, I'll let that swing across the current. If there's any predators you know, in there looking to go here early in the morning, they're gonna see that fly above them and they're gonna get after it. Now you've seen me on the channel here a bunch of times when I'm out trolling, trolling a fly like that just under the surface. What I'm looking for, I'm looking, looking to tempt big fish that are right under the chop first thing in the morning looking to feed. The same situation here. I'm not gonna catch inactive fish on that. I am looking for the biggest fish in any pool, in any run. I'm looking for fish that are in a feeding mode. They're gonna look up, they're gonna see that fly. It's moving through the strike zone and they're gonna have to react to it. Just like you'd fish a floating Rapala or a countdown Rapala. Show them a big meal, get it moving through the zone. They have to react or let the meal go. But uh, in this case, I'm showing them something they probably haven't seen before. Let's take a look at the other rod. So with this rod, this is the uh, this is a Fenwick rod. It's rigged up the same way. It's got the 20 pound braid, um, goes down to eight pound fluoro. There is the weight. Um, on this one, I have a little bit lighter weight because I'm fishing a different type of fly. First time through the pool or through the run, I'm fishing that streamer trying to pick off a big aggressive fish. Once I've covered all the water with that, I'm gonna follow up with something that's more subtle, something that's just not quite as aggressive, and here's what I'm throwing. And uh, these things work great in lakes, they work great in streams, they work for bass, trout, whatever. This is just a really simple number six uh, dragonfly nymph imitation. And uh, it, it looks like a lot of different things. Obviously, it looks like a dragonfly nymph. It looks like a, uh, Yellow jackets are brutal today. Um, it looks like a crawfish. It looks like any number of things that the trout might want to eat. It looks like a stonefly nymph. It just looks buggy. It's got a little movement in the tail. It's got a real crawfishy profile. It's got these rubber legs. Um, how I'm fishing is, is I'm casting it across the current. I'm allowing it to sink and I'm kind of drifting it through the pool on a fairly tight line. If I get hit, I'm going to strike right away. Once it gets kind of through that zone and the line starts to come tight, I drop the rod tip and I let it swing all the way across the current on a tight line. Now, you would think you're going to get very little action out of the fly that way, but that's not true. The current is sur surging and pulsing and upwelling, and every time the weight and the line and the fly hits one of those variations in current, the fly dives, the fly rises the flies moving around. And this one, I put a little bit further from the weight. That's a good 36 inches or so, just to add more action to the fly. Now, that is, is a pretty standard nymph fishing technique that guys that are fishing with fly gear use. You know, they'll put on a nymph like this, sometimes they'll put on two of them, they'll be using a sinking fly line, which is sort of similar to our lead core line. It's not as stiff as our lead core, but it, you know, long story short, it sinks. They'll drift that nymph through the zone, try to get as natural a drift as possible, and then they'll let it swing across current, and add a little manipulation to it or not, and see if they can pick off a fish on the tight line. Once it swings below them, they'll let it hang in the current a bit, they'll lift it up, they'll cast again. Well, I'm doing absolutely the same thing with my spinning rod, and you can do that too. If you like stream fishing, flies are super effective. If you don't want the hassle, if you don't want to learn a whole new deal with fly tackle, rest assured, you can very effectively fish stream trout using flies with spinning gear. You gotta get a little bit out of the box, you gotta figure out your weighting, but uh, the, the, you know, adding weight to the line, but uh, I, I can't praise these things enough. These things are a game changer. They come in a wide variety of weights. There are some that are probably about an eighth of an ounce or so. So it's a very simple way to get a fly in a stream and get it down. The same is true of lake fishing. 
Think about it. if you're a bank angler, you're gonna see guys soaking power bait. You might see a guy, you know, putting a power worm or something under a bobber. Maybe a crappie jig. The real advanced guys, they're gonna be wiggling a crappie jig or a tube jig underneath the bobber. There's always going to be the guy throwing the Castmaster, the guy throwing the rooster tail, the guy throwing a Panther Martin, or maybe a, a Countdown Rapala. How many times have you been out at a lake where there's stocked trout or up in the mountains where there's wild and holdover trout? How many times have you seen a guy on the bank fan casting with a trolling fly or with a streamer fly or with something like that dragonfly imitation? They absolutely work. Part of the charm of the fly is that almost no one uses them in that situation. The setup for lake fishing is the same. Use one of those trolling weights or an improvised kind of Carolina rig. Um, the nice thing about the trolling weight, if you're throwing a Carolina, the weight is going to want to slide up and down the line as you cast. That trolling weight, it's in the line. So that, that's one advantage. Again, get some of those. They're on Amazon. You get a whole big selection of them for like... Uh, 15 bucks or something, you get a whole box full. So anyway, the deal is when you're when you're casting from the bank of a lake or reservoir, it's the same rule as when you're using a Rapala or a Castmaster or a, a Speed Spoon or whatever. You wanna work the surface first and you wanna work 180 degrees of water in front of you. You're on foot, you can't cover a lot of ground so you need to cover the water thoroughly. Work that, that pattern. If you don't get hit, next time, work the same 180 degree arc, cast after cast after cast, count it down to a count of five. Next, count it down to a count of 10. You're working the full spectrum of water in front of you in an arc, and you're also working the entire water column up and down. So, and it doesn't matter, again, it doesn't matter if you're fishing a fly or a rooster tail or a cast master or whatever it is, if you're bank fishing from a lake, that's what you want to do. You want to cover all the water in front of you, top to bottom, the entire arc that's in front of you. Here in the stream, I'm doing the same thing. I'll start out with short, near shore casts. I'll work that area. I'll work it with the big fly first. I'll follow up with the little fly. Then I'll go back to the big fly. I'll start making longer casts, working more of the stream. I'll go back to the little fly. Once I've exhausted all the water I can cover casting from that location, I'll move on. I'll move to my next spot and I'll do the same thing. It's absolutely critical if you aren't fishing from a boat, whether you're fishing a stream or a lake or a reservoir or whatever, if you're using your legs for propulsion, you have to systematically fish the water. You need to cover as, as much of that water as possible, as thoroughly as possible. Start out close, then lengthen your cast. If you catch a fish, if you start out with a long cast, you catch a fish way over there and reel him in, guess what? You probably just spooked a lot of the other potential targets between you and that fish. So start out close, you pop a fish on a close cast, you get him in, you haven't spooked those fish that are way over there on the other side or way out there on a long cast. So anyway, if you're a shore fisherman, stream fisherman, lake fisherman, whatever, don't overlook using flies experiment with some trolling flies, some big streamer flies, and also play around with some of the smaller stuff, some nymphs, some stuff like that. You can fish dry flies with spinning gear too. That's a whole nother subject. I'm gonna demonstrate that pretty soon here on the channel. I gotta get in on a good dry fly bite, but uh, I can tell you from experience. I'm a guy, I spent more than 10 years fly fishing with fly gear exclusively. Um, Tying flies, 10,000 flies a year, helped me pay for my college education. I know how to fish flies on fly gear, and I can tell you, you can fish them just almost, well, in some situations more effectively, but you can fish them almost, almost as effectively across the whole spectrum of fishing opportunities using spinning gear. And uh, the results I get, trolling flies, I mean, they speak for themselves. I've rambled long enough. I want to get in a few more casts. It's getting pretty smoky here, and it's going to get hot real soon. I'm out of here for now. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. If you're looking for flies, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com. Check out my selections of, of flies. You can use them for trolling, but you can also use them for bank casting. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. Thanks for all the support. You guys have a safe, happy day, and uh, I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. I gotta get my fish on before it gets all smoky. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful day, and I will catch you later. I'm Kel Kellogg.